Good morning. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll see you start popping in. We're, we, we had to get a few things straightened out here. Um, just trying to figure out the order of the lessons. A little, I was explaining to, to Jack. Um, usually, if I'm working on a sermon, I, I, I realize a thread. Uh, but since I'm not working on a sermon this week, since Gene is leading worship, um, I, I didn't develop a thread. So as we, it'll be interesting, uh, at least for on my end, uh, because I, again, um, I had to take the, uh, the examination of the text and go, okay, where am I going with this? And uh, Jack, Jack just finds it all the time, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, we were straightening out the order. Uh, so, I got so, confused. So, so is the order incorrect on there? Yes. Okay. So we will be going Isaiah, then Mark, then Psalm, then Second Peter. We'll announce them before each. Uh, and I told Jack I would read uh, first and third. Uh, normally he reads first and third, but those are the two longest ones. Uh, so I volunteered to read the two long ones. So um, and when someone volunteers, offers exactly, to help, exactly. you humble yourself and take the blessing. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, as we prepare for this second Sunday in Advent, uh, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us Amen. pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again uh, in this time of waiting, in this time of preparation, and especially we hear that in these texts today, the preparation. And so often we get busied in the preparation, and that's not what the preparation is about. Uh, the preparation is a preparation of self, as we will hear, especially uh, with the gospel proclamation. So guide us and lead us in this time together so that it may be used as a proper preparation for this season and for the celebration of Christmas. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 40, we're going to start with. Um, those of you that are familiar with uh, Handel's Messiah, uh, this is one of the selections. Uh, verse 1. Uh, that beginning part. So uh, again, we, we hear, um, and as we will go through the weeks in these prophecies, a number of Handel's uh, uh, songs from the Messiah are based off of the Isaiah prophecies. Uh, so uh, Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. You know, when, when I was doing the studies on these, it, it came up with two headings. And one of the heading was the, the result of the southern kingdom of Judah being exiled to Babylon, and they're, you know, the Lord's announcing that they're coming out. And the other heading was the suffering servant, which kind of, you know, the text, you can see that in here. Right. And those two headings just kind of gives you a direction on where you're going with with this reading. And... and yeah, there, there's, there are some questions in here on, on the identity yes. of, of certain characters in this. And the thing is, in Scripture, um, sometimes when you can't quite figure out, you got to let it all sort of be there. Yeah. You, you can't pinpoint sometimes. And this is one of those times in which you cannot pinpoint uh, you can say it's this person and you're right. You can say it's this person and you're right. Right. Um, uh, and, and, and I'll share some of that when we, read, when we uh, discuss the text. So Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort. Comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. That her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, 
and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with the young. Comfort, comfort my people. Uh, again, um, how fitting words for the times that we're in. Um, and yes, all, and, and our time in 2020 is really no different. It just so happens that we got piled with a whole bunch of stuff. All at one time. All at one time. But again, it's no different than what individuals go in their life because I, I've, as I've pastored, as I've ministered, as I've shepherded people, um, there are some times where people are just going through a lot of stuff all at once. And, and, and these words are, are soothing for us to hear. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Notice, says your, your God, not well, the God. Well, it's my people definition correct my people the believers okay my people mm -hmm. all right or the nation of israel at this time but with us we're the new israel my people you know says your god well he is our god right. you know he's god of gods and, and lord of lords over everybody but here it's referencing to we know he's god well, it's sort of like last week, I, and I can't remember if it was the psalm or the epistle, where it, at one part it, it said, the God, and then later on it was your, your God, God or our God. Our God. Right, yeah. where, where, yes, he is God. He he, is, he's, God of all, he's God over all people, whether they believe in him or not. Right. He's the God of all people, right. but he is our God. Right. And right. there's a difference there. Um, yeah. And and, then, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, speak tenderly to mm, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. speak tenderly, you know, a loving voice, uh, the suffering heart, the, 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 the one who says, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to humble my voice down and I'm going to speak tenderly. I'm going to put away all my anger, all my anxiety, all my frustration with my people. And I'm going to speak tenderly. And then you get the contrast right behind that cry out to her. Okay, did you look up cry? No. Okay, cry is herald. The heralding in the street. The one who right. brings the message. So, so, but, 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 it, but that heralding, that crying out, mm -hmm. it, well, in fact, we were talking about this. You know, some of your reaction that uh, I, 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 in my exuberance, I get quite boisterous and loud, and Jack is always soft and mellow. So we are playing out this text. He is speaking yeah. tenderly, and I'm crying out. <laughs> yeah. But now don't ask my wife, because she says I'm quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for but, but, some reason, uh, yeah, our voices are different over this. But yeah, you're right. It is playing it out. I mean... Uh, and and that and that's the, the reality is both things have to go on. Sometimes, sometimes you do speak tenderly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do cry out. And, and and it's not a cry out like we've seen in other texts where it's crying out because you're in anguish. It's crying no. out because we got good news. It's the heralding of it. It's the right. man in the street making the proclamation, reading the king's proclamation. Right. You know? Her warfare is ended. Her iniquity is pardoned. She's received double, a double portion for all her sins. Ooh. No, that's not a bad thing. It's a double portion of good stuff yeah, for well. all the sins. You know, it's, it's, so you 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 know you think you think your sins have put you in the hole. No, you're, you're taken out. out of the hole and yeah. more on top of that. But I don't want double because when I get double, I get distracted with the worldly goods. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, 
this 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 is a more eternity but kind of is, stuff. Yes, I know. This is more <laughs> spiritual, but yes. you know, uh, interesting. You know, a voice cries in the wilderness: "Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God." You know, make straight. Right. You know, I, I thought that was interesting. You know, make straight. It's not. It's not a path. It's not a. It's not a highway that's got a lot of curves. It's talking about getting the crooked people right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So make straight his path. We need to get right. We need to get right, and we need to get those around us right. Get them crooked people in line with the Lord. And and, and this is the first question: Is who's the voice that is crying? Because. As we will see in the gospel, we normally attach who to the voice crying in the wilderness. Well, that was one of the texts, and, and the movie even addressed it, and I did more research on it. Right. How does the text break down? Uh, is the voice calling those in the wilderness, or is it a voice calling to those in the wilderness? Right. Okay? And, and typically, we attach this to the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Right which is John the Baptist. Right. And, and, and I would say that according to this text, a voice cries, and now the quotes come in the wilderness. <laughs> in the wilderness. And, and the voice is God. The voice is God saying, go, go in the wilderness. Go to where the crooked people are. Right. And, you know, if we look back at the definition of the wilderness, you know, in those times, it's a place of desolation. Yep. Isolation, yep. if you know, you got uh, uh, the disease. Coronavirus? No, no, back then. Oh, leprosy. leprosy. Leprosy, you were cast out. You were, you oh, were, yeah. So isolation, abandonment, and danger. You have all that associated with the wilderness. You know, and, and God's crying out, go get them people and straighten those crooked people out. Right. You know? Or, or... It, you know, if, if you're looking at physical ailments, you know, coronavirus is a perfect one. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean that is today's leprosy. It is. Because look at what happens to those people. They're isolated. They're abandoned. <laughs> you know, they're left out. The families are separated. Right. And, and, and sometimes, yet sometimes the crookedness of the people is of their own doing. Sometimes the crookedness of the people is just because sin impacts their life. And, but but still the message is the same. Go, go to those people and make them straight. Make make a straight path. Make ma straight. make up make it a place that they can follow to where they needed to be headed in the right direction, uh, and not despair. You know, and, and and then you not only do you have a wilderness, you've got the desert, you've got the valley. <laughs> you know, you you. The uneven ground, you, the rough places, you've got all these images. Yeah. It's nice to go down into a valley, but it's hard coming up a hill. Make a level highway. Yeah. Keep it straight. Go biking around here. Uh, don't do that anymore. Not motor, no, not motor biking. <laughs> I mean bicycle biking. Oh, we well, can do that at the park. Meeks Park's not too bad in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> the hill right behind. Right, I, I tried to outdoor bike when I first got here my the hill right before my house always killed me I never made it up that hill and that's when I knew I'm exercising in the house now uh, but yeah yeah and 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 all these great imageries of uh, despair you know the the wilderness the the desert the valley the uneven ground the rough places you've got the contrast you know yeah. you know make straight lifted up um you know even even the mountains are going to be made low made low <laughs> we, we th those hikes aren't going to be those that difficult no, anymore we're on right straight down a level path <laughs> exactly straight uh, and level you know, yeah and, but the the cool thing is all all of that is happening so that the people can do what have an easy life find god find god <laughs> verse I, 5 you yeah know, you know, because in contrast with that, you know, you know, we're saying, you know, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all flesh together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He wants everybody to have an easy path to find him. But then, then when we get down and I'm jumping to nine because it says, 
go up on a high mountain. Yeah, but that's a different mountain. Well, and 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 yes, there's a reason for six, seven, and eight. Yeah, uh, there and, is. And, and this is really where this is really where the connection I, I I saw with the gospel with six, seven, and eight. Because notice a voice cries. Uh, here here's the commissioning. You know, three, four, and five. Yeah, and three, again, that's heralding. That's you know, I don't want people to think that. We're, we're crying. Correct. We're, we're her- heralding. We're telling the good news. Well, and, and I would say verse 3, you could even say a voice commissions. Yes. Because basically, the voice is saying, this is, this is what I want you to do. And then we get to 6, a voice says, cry. Again, not, not, right. a, n- not a plaintive, not a beat down, but no. a... Here, here, and, and and that's what I, and I said, what shall I cry? It's like, okay, God, now you now you've given me the commission. Now you, now now I know what I need to do. Now, what do I do? What do I say? Yeah. What do I say? Oh, like Moses. What do I say? What do I tell your people? And, and but you know what? I don't. I this message is not a nice, easy one to deliver. No, it's not. Um, the grass wither, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. <laughs> That's not a good thing. He's talking about sinners here. That, that's that's when my wife uh, tells me after service, you know, you were on that law part too long, <laughs> and and that's really what he's talking about here is that law the the law the law the law is the is the breath of the Lord blowing, and it's a very it's not a warm breath, it's a hot breath. Yes, it's a hot breath, and a hot wind when it blows. Grass will wither and flowers will fade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, but but again, notice that word is faithful. It's true. It will always stand firm. Verse eight: The word of the Lord will stand forever. Right. You know, it's like the flower of the field in verse six. In contrast to nine, go up on the mountain. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. You, you know, speak. Speak up, herald out, you know, be up there on the mountain, you know, walk with God, you know. Well, and, and yeah, when you're up on a mountain, your voice will tend to project out. Yeah, you know, that, right. that, and, and really, you're right, get up on the high mountain because, you know, every, every time mountain is referred to in Scripture, it's a it's place where God dwells. A place where, in other words, if you wanted to make an altar or do something, you went to a high place, right? You know. Well, and you got to go to that high place in order to continue to be fed with, with that word, so that you have the message to yeah. deliver. And basically, I see six, seven, and eight as the law, and then nine and following as the gospel. It's the gospel. Yeah. You know, go up on the mountain, O herald of good news. Lift up your voice. Lift it up. Say to the cities of Judah. Behold your God. Your God. Your God. Yes. Okay? Yes. You yes. know, not the God, right. your God. And and notice what your God does. He comes with might, his arm rules, his reward is with him, his recompense is before him. He tends the flock, he gathers the lambs, he carries them, and he gently leads. Yeah. And you gotta look at verses ten and eleven as a threefold prophecy. Okay? Behold, the Lord God comes with might. His arm rules with him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with, with young. You know, I mean, out of, ex, out of being the exile people in Babylon, you know, I can see the birth of Christ here mm-hmm. and can also see his return. Yeah. Right, you know, and right. one of the tests for a prophet was now in the short term and in the long term, you know, and and, and Isaiah, of course, we know is is a legitimate prophet of God, but right. here, I mean, it's like it's threefold, you know, it's 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 been done, it's been done, and it's going to happen. Right, exactly. You know, just, and 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 again, that 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 leads us if you're if you're good, that leads uh-huh. us right into the gospel because again. Now we see that second part of the prophecy. We see that, you know, again, as, you know, right. what, what shall I cry? 
you know, that's John the Baptist asking that question, yes. what shall I what cry? Shall I what, cry? What is the message that uh, you want us to deliver? So we're, we're moving to Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 8. And as Jack pointed out last week, I don't think we have any of it in this week's text, but Mark is known for using the word immediately. Because his his message is very, very, short. very condensed. Yes. Uh, he packs a lot in a small place. Um, and, and one of the things, because you probably caught it too, they said, what Mark does in eight chapters, it takes Matthew, in, in eight verses, it takes Matthew and Luke like 20. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, he's very condensed and very straight to the point. Right, you know? right. Uh, Mark chapter 1, we'll start with verse 1, we'll go through verse 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare <clears throat> excuse me, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan and confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. He preached, saying, After me comes one who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Powerful words. The beginning of the gospel. Yeah, the good news. Um, and, and and it's very intriguing. Um, to to me, really, the beginning of the gospel. He points in out in verse two. It, the, the beginning of God, of the gospel, it, and this plays on what we talked about last week. Those those who were uh, going before and those who were following after right. in, in the triumphal entry. Yes. You know, the, those who were going... Leading the way and the ones that are just following to see what's going on. Well, to, or, or following to, to carry that message after Christ. Well, okay, all right. And, and that's really what I'm seeing here is the going before, the, those who have gone before Christ, preparing the way, that, that's the preparation of the way, here, here is the way. Jesus is the way. And then those who come after, those who follow after, are the ones who are continuing that message. And really, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I, I think Mark is pointing out to us, you know what? It's already begun. Go back to Isaiah. Yes. Go back to Isaiah. He's, he's taking it back. That the gospel has already begun in Isaiah. It, it, it's what you were saying. The three... The three uh, unfoldings of that prophecy in Isaiah's time, in Christ's time, time and when Christ returns. returns. So, so again, it's pointing out what Jack was saying is the beginning of the gospel really started with those prophecies. And it's interesting. Every one of the gospels, the four gospels, start with a validation of sorts. Mm -hmm. Matthew starts with the lineage, the, you know, the... Uh, John starts with, you know, in the beginning was the word. Which you goes know. back to Genesis. Right. And and here we've got Mark who goes back to Isaiah, validating who Christ is. Right, right. You know, right. Uh, yeah, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right. You know, bold proclamation. This is who he is. Take away any doubt. He's not a prophet. He's not a... He, he's prophet, priest, and king. But he's not just a prophet, he's not just a priest, and he's not just a king. Right. And, and the, the reality of it is, is he unfolds it all in the first verse, and now he's basically saying, now, now pay attention to the rest of the gospel because I'm going to explain all of this. Gonna, gonna, I'm going to explain what it means to be Jesus Christ, Son of God. Yes. In a very short, condensed, <laughs> right. this is it, people. You know, no meandering around, no building a case, it, just boom. I... In other words, he doesn't do it like Paul does it. He doesn't do it like Martin Luther does it. Uh, <laughs> because the two of them were known to really 
you know, unfold things. I mean, he, he um, just proclaims who he is. Right. I mean, first of all, who is John? Okay. He not only explains who Christ is. Right. But he also explains who he is. Right. You know. Uh, right. And, and, and again, he uses that prophecy that we just heard, but it's that sense of prepare. What does it mean to prepare? And, and, and the ones that are going before. Uh, and, and, and that's really what this, this is really unfolding for us, is what does it mean to prepare? Right. I mean, he can say who, who Christ is, but if he can't validate who he is to bring this message, it's meaningless. Well, and the other thing is, is if you're not prepared to receive the message, it's going to go straight over your head. Right, right over you're, your head. You're not going to catch it. You know. And, 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 and that's... And that's, you know, he's, he's not just preparing, preparing for the Lord. He's, he's, he's preparing all of us. He's taking for the, the Lord. crooked people and making them straight. Exactly. Okay. He exactly. Says, you know, what are they coming to him for? To be baptized for what? For the, re, for the repentance of sins. Okay. They're repenting their sins. They're recognizing they are sinners. You know, it's, it's very interesting, you know. They go to the temple and they do this, that, and the other, and they give their gifts and they give their sacrifices and offerings. But do they realize they're a sinner, or are they doing it out of duty? And 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 that and and I didn't catch this until I watched our little thing that we we tend to watch. He's proclaiming a baptism, so yes. he's baptizing, but he's proclaiming the baptism. In other words. He's ex that's the preparation. He's explaining what this baptism is all about. He's right. explaining what this repentance is all about. So, so it's it's not like okay, he's just preaching a sermon. He's proclaiming this baptism so that it's not just a rite. It's, it's not just an exercise. A ceremonial cleaning, if you would, before you go into the temple, you had to be bathed and have that ceremonial right. washing. This is I'm a sinner. I'm coming to be baptized for the repentance. I'm a, of sin. I'm a sinner. What I've always said: I'm a sinner, and I need a savior. Yes. And, and and notice what happens when they are baptized, and and I think that's what draws this out is uh, they were going out to him and were being baptized, confessing their, their sins. Sin. They were getting the message they because were, it was not just only about the baptism, you know, but it's what went along with the baptism. You know, and obviously, that was upsetting to all the Pharisees and Sadducees at the time. Because it says here, you know, all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him. Now, literally all, I don't, it's, I don't know, but that's what the word says. So I have to accept that, okay? Right. All right. So here's Pharisees and the Sadducees who say, hey, you got to do this. You got to do your thighs. You got to do follow the law. And here they're just going out. And confessing their sins. And what was drawing them? What was drawing them to go out? Be because they give the description of John here, uh, wearing clothed in camel's hair, wore a leather belt, and ate locusts and wild honey. He was no Joel Osteen. No, but if, <laughs> if, we, if we go back to, uh, I had to look this one up. They answered, this is in Second Kings, they answered him. He wore a garment of hair, with a belt of leather about his waist. That's Elijah. It was Elijah. Okay. And yeah. here's John in the same outfit. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. He's looking the same. He's, 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 and where is he? In the desert. Okay. A desolate, dangerous, abandoned, you know, drawing people to God. Which, I mean, which connects us to that Isaiah passage about the prophecy and the prophet. What, sh what shall I say? What shall I cry? Right. And, and, and here is, I mean, God's just putting it right in front of our face. This is the prophet. Yeah. Just, just as Isaiah. This is the prophet, the one crying in the wilderness. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, and, and, and he attaches them to a former prophet. Well, I mean, even Jesus in Matthew says, for all the prophets and the laws prophesies until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is 
Elijah who is to come. Right. Then he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Right. And, and how do we hear? Hearing by the word of God. You know, and and the word, and again, that's why you know, back in Isaiah, Isaiah, it was cry, 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 because because it needs to be spoken. It's and again, do, doing good deeds for people, showing your Christian love for people. That that's wonderful. It is, but if the word is not attached, the connection isn't being made. You know, and and and, that, and that's why he had to proclaim the baptism of repentance. It wasn't just baptized. It just wasn't the the deed of Christian love. It was the word attached He's to it. He's got to attach the word. Why am I doing this? And right. who am I? Right. It's all because I am making the path straight for the Lord. Right. For the Lord. Right. You know. And 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 you know here here is and and again. What and that, go back to my question. What was drawing them? It wasn't John. It was the message. It, it was, was the, the message, word. It was the, the proclamation. It was God working in their hearts? And and and, you know. and the reality of it is, when we saw in, in Isaiah, part of that message is not something that's pleasing to our ear. Not necessarily, you know. And even John, you know, in the end here, he says, "I am not worthy, but he it was coming will baptize with the Holy Spirit." You know, I'm not worthy to untie his shoes, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. You know, he's explaining, you're getting baptized for the mission of sins, but Christ is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Did you find anything on that I am not worthy to stoop down and untie? I, I, I didn't I didn't find anything. Well, I, it, it goes back. I, to, I know what rattled in my head. <laughs> well, what, what I got out of it, I didn't really do a lot of research on it because it came to me is that, you know, the servants, you know, in other words, the servants would do this, okay? And and, and, and that's what rattled in my head you know, was, I'm not worthy to be a servant he, of him. Exactly. I, you know, not not only am I not worthy to I, I'm not be worthy. him, I'm not even worthy to be his servant. Or to be in his presence. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's what I got out of. I didn't. And, and so we're on the same line. We're on then. the same line, but I didn't see anything on it. I didn't. Be, because, again, to me, stoop down and... and and untie is a servant position, but it's also a position of worship. Right. Yeah. And, and and it's and it's just and again, this comes back to his proclaiming a baptism of repentance is really that that message is the realization I'm not worthy. And and he's he's even realized right. it. He's realizing and I'm not I'm not worthy. I'm not. Yeah. And, and and I need a savior, and 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 yeah, I, I'm just baptizing with water. He's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. But see, that's his confession. Yeah, his confession. You know, the people are confessing their sins. He's confessing his unworthiness. Yep. So well, and and that's and that's really what confessing your sins is. It's you're confessing your unworthiness. Yeah. You know. The, uh, you know. Shall we move on? To we, the song? we shall move on. I'm going to read the whole thing today. No, I'm reading it. I'm oh, I'm, I'm in third position. Oh, okay. And I'm reading the whole thing today. <laughs> <laughs> all all to all thirteen verses of it. Yeah, Psalm eighty five. Uh, in fact, we've done this one before. Uh, I, did, I, I didn't look back. I didn't look back, but but I. It, I I had my all, things highlighted and everything, so I we, thought we, it was very familiar. We, when I was we've done this at. one before, so. Uh, I think I think we were more centered on the bottom half of it rather than the whole thing. Uh, so Psalm 85, Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin, Selah. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. 
Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Yeah, uh, as, as I was trying to figure this thing out and connect it, uh, uh, to, uh, again, I, I, I think the theme here is preparation. You know, uh, and the message, the message that needs to go with that preparation. And, and I think part of that is, is this is, to me, Psalm 85 is that message. Is, yes. Be, because ver, to, what I saw in verses 1 to 3 is I thought I saw them recounting God's past acts. Yeah, and even if you start, right in the first verse, you restored the fortunes of Jacob. You know, Jacob now is the family name, the patriarch. Mm -hmm. He's talking about people, his people. Not the nation of Israel. Right. Not, not the nation, but the family. Right. Th that closeness. Well, and notice they're all you past know. tense. You were favorable. You restored. You forgave. You co covered. You withdrew. You turned from. They're right. all past they're tense. All past this tense. is all that. Right. So, so you know, as, as you know, again, not knowing when this was written it's not attributed to david so so yeah. look they're recounting their past history boy right. let, let's look let's look at how god has taken care of yeah. us you know interesting that in verse two it says you forgave the iniquity of your people that forgave is you have lifted mm. the iniquity you know and and that gives me the mind of christ being lifted up right. on the cross right you know right. You have lifted the iniquity, and you covered. The blood of Christ covers mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just saw Christ in that whole right. verse. Right. You know, and you'd miss that if you just, you know, because God doesn't forgive sins without some kind of payment. Right. Well, and the reality of it is, they didn't have that at this point. We do. When when we read this, that we have, we're looking in the past, looking at God's past actions. Right. But then we get when we get to four, five, six. And seven, now this is present reality. Yes. Restore us again. Right. Put away your indignation. Now the questions, will you be angry? Will you prolong? Will you not revive? <laughs> you know, again, they, they are in a situation where they're going, oh, oh may, maybe Christians in 2020? Thinking. Yeah. Okay. I mean, are people not crying out, Lord? Right. After the towers, after the virus, after, you know. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Right. But, you know, and the irony of this is, you know, this was written, of course, in, 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 in you know, the Old Testament times where they'd walk away and they'd come back. They walk away and they come back. You know, and I have to put that to our times. Okay. We walk away and we come back. Yeah. We walk away and we come back. And, and but I want to, I want to make sure because in, in, in our country today, this restore us again is not about America. It, no, because it, that it, goes back to Jacob. It's the family of God. It's not the nation. But but I know a lot of people have taken this passage and and referred it to America. You can't. You can't. Be, because again, I mean, we can ask God to restore our nation. We want our nation restored. Correct. But it's the people that need to be restored, not the country. And go back to the message of John the Baptist. His message was to proclaim your sinfulness, your unworthiness. Right. That's what we need. You know, we, we, get, we get so filled in our country that I'm okay, you're okay. Right. <laughs> that I'm worthy. N no, you're not. You're not worthy. I'm not worthy. You're not worthy. We aren't. The only worthiness we have comes from Christ. That's right. And and and, that, and as you say, you see that for us, you see that in one through three, uh, God's past act is what gave us worthiness, and now they're feeling that. Un so it says, "Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation." And verse eight is the key. Yeah. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. 
hello, we got his word, you know. <laughs> I mean, you got it there, I've got it here. Well, I mean, and, and that's been this thing is to, to properly be, be prepared is we've got to hear the word of God yeah. to show us our unworthiness, but also to show us our Savior. Yeah. Let all those who have hear, hear. Yep. Okay, what are you going to hear? You're going to hear the word of God. Right. You know, not, not me, myself, and I, and what I think. The way I, well, it should be like this. No. Right. You know. Right. Well, and, and that's that's the danger of trying to preach is making sure your agenda isn't being accomplished in that, that you're just preaching the Word of God. You're unfolding the Word of God like we do on Wednesday. We're just trying to unfold the Word of God here. And, and so... Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, not what Dave the Weshy will speak. Oh, not turn, <laughs> not turn back to my folly. <laughs> oh, well, and and, yeah. and again, that that that's the the sense of repentance. The sense of repentance is to confess the, I did it wrong and turn away from it. Well, did you catch what they said? It's not only turning away from something; it's turning toward something. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so so that we've. We've turned toward God. We don't want to turn back toward the folly. So, so that's that's the sense of repentance. The sense of repentance is not only a turning away from our sin, but also the turning toward God. Toward and now he's saying, now that you're here, don't go back. <laughs> don't go back. Because look at what you got. Salvation is near. The glory and and we're looking for the glory to dwell. Oh, in our land. <laughs> now, what does that mean there? What does it mean in our land? Okay, the meaning of that, because I knew I'd get you on that one. All right, the land here means in the fellowship where God abides. Okay, not our nation. Correct. It's, it's abiding with God in our land. Right. I, I got he, you on that No, one. you didn't. Oh, because, okay. Because he, was... he defines our land. Again, this harkens back, a, a Jew would hear this, it harkens back to the promised land. The promised land. The, the, the land where God has, has placed us where he dwells. Where he dwells. Right. Yeah, he, he abides. Because, because the, the glory may dwell in our land, the only way the glory is going to dwell in our land is... God's got to be in that land. He does, uh, and, and then and then that glory is explained in ten through thirteen. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. Righteousness looks down from the sky. To me, to me, I thought of in creation because in creation that's how water happened. Is is it came from came, both directions? Yeah, did, did, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and, yeah. and 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 I know in the flood it came in both directions. Uh, so God God works that way, and then yes, God will give what is good, and not only will He give it, but He's going to cause the things that He has created to yield it. Um, so then we got the the path making the path straight in verse thirteen. Righteousness will go before. Mm -hmm. And make his footsteps away. Away. There's there's the there's a straight right. yeah. there's the straight paths. There's yeah. straight paths. Yeah. What what else you got there? I just you know, you know we've got to hear it, and we've got to do it. Right. We can't just hear it. We have to turn around, repent, walk to God, do His will. Right. You know, I mean these are all God's attributes and promises. You know, faithfulness is. His goodness, his his righteousness. I mean, it's all about God. It's not about us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we turn to a a dark text uh, in some ways. Second uh, Peter three eight to fourteen. Yeah. Uh, and this is the one Gene is going to be preaching on Sunday. Yeah. I, of all the texts, when I got done doing the study, you know, Gene had told me he was doing Second Peter, and I'm thinking. Well, he picked the hard one. He, he, he. I mean, the other ones are the, the whole message flowed easy. It would be, you know. But I guess God's got a well, and and sometimes you got to preach those hard texts. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, because again, especially with what we have gone through this year, uh, because again, second, 
First and Second Peter are written to a people that were in persecution, um, and sometimes we feel that way uh, since we've been piled on this year. Yeah, we, we we feel like a persecuted people. We definitely are an isolated people. Um, <laughs> But I mean, the first and, and, and verse that's, of the text per, is And that's what persecution, persecution is in isolation. It is. Uh, and so, really, these are words, for the unbeliever, they're, they're words of horror. But for the believer, they're words of comfort. In a so, sense. So, so we go back to Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort ye my people. They are a word of comfort in the sense of, you know what, we got to let God be God. Uh, we got to let God be God. Well, we do, and, and, and I, you say comfort, but I found the first couple of verses disturbing. <laughs> and I guess that's why I'm like, oh my you, goodness. Okay. You, get, you get to read it, Second right, Peter 3, 8 to 14. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in your lives of holiness you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens, a new earth in which righteous, righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent, be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. You know, when I was reading this and as I was doing this, you know, I went back to last Sunday. You know, the heavens would be rent. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and I didn't really understand rend until I started to get into the study. You know, it's not just tore open. It's rip, rip it open. open you exactly. know? It's not just a little tear. But, well, why do you think I preached it the way I did I on mean, Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was not like, oh, rend the heavens. No, rend the heavens yeah, open. Yeah, I mean, right. you know. Right. Uh, I, just, I just find it upsetting in, 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 in a sense that, you know, the day, you know, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day and I'm thinking, you know, I'm praying, okay, Lord, I've been suffering with this coronavirus issue you know all of 2020 right. you know come on let's get it over let's be done with this you know give us give us hope and and then i read this huh a thousand years is like a day and, uh, and i'm like wait a minute you know and the indian then the encouraging part you know putting the virus aside the lord is 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 not slow to fulfill his promise as some count notice, but patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish. Now I'm thinking, okay, that's good news because if he would have been anxious, maybe I wouldn't have been chosen. Maybe I, you know, would I be his child? What if he came before? You know, I, I remember my early years. You know, I was raised in the church. I walked away from the church and the Lord. Yeah. Okay, you know, and, and now I, I'm back and I hope in his good grace, I pray that I'm doing his will and, and his work. You know, I mean, right. Uh, I mean, that's all we can do. It, it's, well, and, and, and to me, you know, the hopefulness is in that, but that all should reach repentance as, as you know, again, this repentance theme has been it's, filtering through here. It's realizing we're not worthy. We need things like the coronavirus, like the social unrest, like the political upheaval. We need things like that to remind us that God is God. This world, this world's not a good place, and this too will pass. This this world is not a. I I don't want to cling on to, the, and and I think that's that's some of the sense here is you know where where he talks about um uh, I gotta find it. 
verse 12, uh, talking about what sort of people you ought to be in your lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Like we like I've been preaching the last several times. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. You know, you know how long, O oh Lord? How long? We're hastening that day, and 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 God's saying, oh, up, up, step on the brakes, step on, step on the brakes. I mean, we're not going to make it any sooner or any later with our prayers and requests. But, but it's our state of mind that God is trying to change. And the reality of it is, is we're we're, we're going to make it, but. Who is he trying to reach through us? And this is the connection back to Isaiah of the one who asks, what should I cry? We are, so, so we not, 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 on, not only was that Isaiah who is asking that question, what should I cry? It's John the Baptist asking that question, what should I cry? But that text is pointing to us. What should we We cry? should be, and that's where this can, this comes in is we should be asking the question what should we be crying what should we be heralding as I, I, as you I, mentioned it I, I just i have trouble with that word cry because it it just throws me off i need the herald <laughs> I, and, and, and when i think of herald the it's miami like, herald yeah it's like yeah i remember that paper <laughs> I, I delivered that paper actually for a while. There you go. Uh, you know, but Harold, just to to cry out, if you would, you know, the word, the good news, you know, at, at the top of your voice, being a herald. Right, right, and 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 you know, for us, yeah, the the day of the Lord's coming like a thief. The heavens are going to pass away with, it. and that's all. That's the confounding thing is they're hastening this coming. They're hastening for the heavens to pass away with the roar and, and everything to be burned up and dissolved. Uh, the reality of it is, though, is the third thing. The earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Uh, they will be laid bare. They will be shown for what they are. Right. And it's not only our acts, but it's also what we just read in Psalm. Yeah. God's acts will be shown for what they are. God's acts. Did you get anything on that thief in the night? I didn't spend any time with it. I, I thought it was interesting. I went back on it a little bit. The thief in the night, okay, the, the night, of course, is the darkest hours of the day. Mm -hmm. That's when evil reigns. Which is the darkest hour of the night. A, a night, okay. <laughs> it night. is the day, too. <laughs> but, okay. but, but it is it. the darkest times. Yeah. Evil reigns. Yeah. Okay. Nothing good happens okay. after midnight. And... The unawareness as we sleep. Mm, mm, mm. Okay? Right. So you've got the darkest, the evil, and the unaware. Right. And it's, that's when God's going to come. The, the, you, you know, that's when he's going to return. The like crooked, the the crooked path people. Even us. We're asleep. Yeah, but we don't have anything to fear. No, we don't. We, 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 we rest. Well, and he says that in 14. We rest in peace because we are assured yeah. it christ himself said it, it's going to come like a thief in the night right but it, it going back like to the ten virgins night all right some were prepared for the night some weren't and so when all ten of them fell asleep five of them yeah you know they might have all had peaceful rest, but only five of them truly had peaceful rest. We have peaceful rest. We don't need to fear these things because the deeds will be exposed. Not only our deeds, but God's deeds God will be deeds. exposed. Yeah. And it will be exposed in a mighty way for us because we're going to rejoice that we're going to see Christ. Uh, and and but again, the thing is, and, and you said this earlier, it's not just, okay, we've heard this, but okay, what do we do with this? What do we do? You know, that's the question. What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness as you wait for and hasten, hasten the coming day? What, what do we look like? What have we done? What have we... Right. Okay. And that takes me back to uh, Ephesians. So that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. That That's a big task, to be without blemish, to be holy, 
you know, uh, without spot or wrinkle. And, and, I mean, and and the only way we're presented that presented that way is that we already wear a garment that is not ours. Uh, we wear the robe of Jesus Christ as, of His righteousness. And, and 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 again, to answer that question about how should you live, and, and typically we would say live a life of righteousness. But I would say from today's text, we need to live a life of repentance and righteousness. Okay. Because we need to realize that we are sinners in need of a Savior. That's the repentance. But then the righteousness is realizing we have a Savior who now clothes us. Yeah. Who clothes us with his righteousness, who makes us uh, without spot or blemish, so that we can be at peace. Uh right. In, in living in this day. So, so it doesn't make a difference whether we've been piled on with a whole bunch of stuff this year. <laughs> it's, it's continue to hear the message. Yeah, and what do we do with that pile? How do we it, react? To how it? do we react to the pile? You know, exactly. What have we been chosen to do? We have been chosen to lift up, find that crooked path and make it straight. To find that individual who needs to hear the good right. news. Right. It, and maybe there's believers out there that just need an encouraging word right. to keep from falling off the path. Because it's easy to fall into fear and despair, isolation, loneliness. It is. All those things. It's very easy to. That's that's how Satan acts. He tries to separate so that, that we live. He can whisper in our ear. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, uh, great message through these texts. Absolutely. That, that, that sense of repentance, uh, but also the sense for us to realize that we, we are the prophet uh, that, is, that is asking the question, well, what, what do I cry out? Well, this is what we cry out. Yeah. To point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. Anything else? Let's close with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks uh, again as you uh, take us through this word. Uh, we pray especially uh, for Gene on Sunday as he's preparing that message to, to deliver to your people uh, based on Second Peter. And we just pray an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon him. Now, Heavenly Father, as you prepare us for, for our time of worship, uh, let us be open to hear your message, to realize uh, our unworthiness, our worthlessness, but also that our worthiness comes from you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we can live lives of repentance and righteousness and not in fear, but in trust of, of the many blessings that you give to us this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as we uh, go for, through the rest of the week, let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.